Hi there, this section is um, a summary of curve sketching. So section 3.6 is kind of putting everything together that you have learned about identifying characteristics of function. So from like algebra, pre-calc, um, and then in this chapter for calculus. And we're really gonna focus on using our calculus skills um, that we now have in our toolboxes in order to identify characteristics and figure out what the graphs of um, uh, what the graph of a function looks like. Um, so let's look at first this polynomial function. And back in algebra or pre-calc, we would have started with, well, what are the x-intercepts? Let's say f of x equal to zero. The thing is that this polynomial looks like it would be kind of brutal to factor. Like you could try using rational root theorem, but that leading coefficient of one third would be tough. Um, so why don't we first determine our first derivative and pull out the information that we can from the first derivative. So that would be where f is increasing or decreasing. And first derivative test uh, would allow us to determine where there are relative extrema, so where there's highs and lows in the graphs. graph. Um, so our first derivative would be x squared minus 4x plus 3. If we set f prime equal to 0, that will allow us to solve for the critical numbers. So our critical numbers for the polynomial function are where f, f prime is equal to zero. So at one and three. And we can put those uh, critical numbers on the analysis line for f prime. And we know that f prime is a quadratic that opens up. So we go from positive to negative to positive. You can also think about plugging uh, test values into the first derivative. So we'll go from increasing to decreasing to increasing. I can state that. So f will go from increasing on the intervals from negative infinity to one and three to infinity and we'll be decreasing between one and three. This also, this analysis line also allows us um, to identify the relative extrema. So we can see that because f prime changes from positive to negative at x equals to one, there would be a relative maximum at one. And then if I plug one into f of x, so f of 1 would be 7 thirds or 2 and a third, because um, I want to plot the actual point. So 1 comma 2 and a third, and then there would be a relative min at x equals to 3, because f prime changes from negative to positive at x equals to 3. I'm not writing down the justifications here. I'm just identifying all the characteristics in order to sketch the graph. Um, but you could justify each of these statements. OK, and when we plug in 3, f of 3, I get 1. OK, um, <clears throat> so for 1, comma seven thirds to be a max, the graph is gonna have to kind of curve down around that point, right? We know there's a horizontal tangent line at one as well as three, and then for it to be a min, we'll kind of curve up like that. We could also think about the end behavior, and the end behavior model for this polynomial function is the term with the largest exponent. And remember, end behavior, we're thinking about limits as x approaches positive or negative infinity. Well, as x approaches negative infinity, one third x cubed would approach negative infinity. And as x approaches positive infinity, one third x cubed would approach positive infinity. Um, so that's helpful. And then, oh, it would be easy enough to find the y-intercept, f of zero is one. So we do know that point. That's easier to find than the x-intercepts. So the graph will come down like that and then 
go up to positive infinity as x approaches positive infinity. But we want to get a little bit more detail on what's happening between 1 and 3. Um, like what's happening with the concavity. So for concavity, remember we want to determine what f double prime is and, and look at what the sign of f double prime is doing. So f double prime is... 2x minus 4. So the possible point of inflection will be where f double prime is equal to 0, which looks like it would be at x equals to 2 is our possible point of inflection. So if we put 2 on an analysis line for f double prime and think about test values, so like 0 and 3, um, Plugging those values in, so negative would be concave down, looks like a frown. Positive would be concave up, looks like a cup. So it looks like there is a point of inflection at x equals to 2, and we want to know the y-coordinate that goes with it, so we can find f of 2 by plugging into the original function I get five thirds. So that would be one and two thirds. One and two thirds would be the point of inflection. So my graph's a little bit off here. But this matches up with the concavity as well, right? So um, concave down was from negative infinity to 2, concave up, where f double prime is positive, would be from 2 to infinity. Okay, so that's a sketch of the graph of f of x, and we could always compare it with uh, Desmos here. So y equals to 1 third x cubed minus 2x squared plus 3x plus 1. There we go. It looks pretty close. Okay. So we are able to use calculus to identify all of those characteristics that we just used in order to sketch the graph of f. All right, let's check out a rational function, okay? So it would still be helpful for us. So it would still be helpful for us to identify like the domain or any domain restrictions. Like we could see here that x can't be equal to plus or minus one. We know from our pre-calculus perspective, but also from limits, um, that there are vertical asymptotes at x equals to positive 1 and x equals to negative 1. So we could even sketch those right away. Okay, so vertical asymptotes at negative 1 and 1. Oh, that's sorry, that's positive 1. Okay, uh, let's think n behavior too. Since this is a rational function, let's think n behavior. So the limit as x approaches... Well, how about positive and negative infinity? It's going to be the same for this one for both. Uh, of g of x would end up being equal to 3. Thinking about the end behavior model, right? That would simplify to be 3. So that means that there is a horizontal asymptote 
at y equals to 3 that we could sketch that's going to guide our end behavior. So y equals to 3. Okay. And then it is easy enough to identify x-intercept. So there's x-intercept at 0, 0. Now we could <clears throat> we could think about test values. Um, so to figure out the limit as x approaches like negative one from the left and from the right. So like from the left. Thinking about just test values really close. Like if you thought about like negative point uh, or like negative point nine, 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 right? Uh, so that value squared would be positive and then negative point nine, 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 squared would be a value that is less than one. So if you subtract one, you're in the negative. So it would be a positive over negative, which would be negative, so negative infinity. We know that the function will approach um, negative infinity as x approaches negative one from the left. Okay, so approach negative infinity as x approaches negative one from the left. Um, and then from the right, oh, that was from the right. I said negative 9.9, .9, or sorry, negative 0.99999, right? Sorry, that would be um, as x approaches negative 1 from the right side. From the left, okay, so negative... 1.0001 squared, that's going to be larger than, um, than 1, so that'll be positive in the denominator, positive in the numerator. So as x approaches 1, negative 1 from the left, g of x will actually approach positive infinity, okay? And then as x approaches 1 from the left, so, um, as like thinking about plugging 0 0.9999 in for x, that would be positive over negative, which would be negative infinity. Another perspective is that 3x squared, so our, our x-intercept, has a multiplicity of two, so it would bounce off of the x-axis. That makes sense. And then the limit as x approaches one from the right. That would be pause out of infinity. So we'll go up like that. Okay. Um, let's check increasing decreasing so let's find g prime and also concavity would probably be helpful here so g prime thinking low d high minus high d low make sure this all confirms so low d high minus high d low all over low low. Okay, simplifying that would be 6x cubed. Okay, so it'll be minus 6x over x squared minus 1 squared. So 0 x equals to zero is our only critical number. P 
positive and negative one are not in the domain, so they're not critical numbers, but we would want to put them on an analysis line for G prime. Label them as vertical asymptotes because they are not possible relative extrema. Okay, so to the left of negative one, like negative two, that would be positive in the numerator, positive in the denominator, so increasing. And then like negative one half. That would end up being positive over positive, so to be increasing as well. That makes sense with what we have already. One half would be negative over positive, so negative. And then uh, positive two would be negative. Okay, so we can see G would be increasing on the intervals from negative infinity to negative one, negative one to zero. And we know end behavior, right? We know that the graph will probably go kind of like this. We could toward, trend towards um, y equals to three. We could figure out if it crosses at all by setting our original equation equal to three. I don't know if we really need to do that. And then decreasing from zero to one, one to infinity which matches up with what we have. So I think that's probably what the graph kind of looks like. We could examine concavity. Uh, we could identify like where points of inflection would occur. Would there be any points of inflection? I don't think so. No, I don't think there would be. Um, <clears throat> so let's double check. Let's see what we have. What we have here. I think we have enough to know what this looks like. Yep. Looks good. Looks pretty darn close. You even use purple. Okay, so you could find second derivative um, and also confirm like concavity, but we know what it looks like. Okay, so let's look at this radical function. Um, I think it would be helpful because there's definitely domain restrictions for this function. So let's think about the domain. Um, x squared minus 4 would have to be strictly greater than 0. Um, if we think about putting the values that would make x squared minus 4 0 on our analysis line. And then doing test values, we're thinking x squared minus 4 is a parabola that opens up, so it'll go positive, positive negative, positive. <clears throat> so the domain of m of x would be negative infinity to negative two union two to infinity, okay? Which is kind of an interesting domain. So there's nothing between negative two and two. Um, I think it would also be interesting to think about end behavior for this function. So the end behavior model would be the ratio x over the square root of x squared. Um, so if you're thinking end behavior model, Right, x over the square root of x squared will just simplify to be one. Um, and because we had that square root simplifying out, we know that um, our end behavior model, depending on which infinity x is approaching, will be either positive or negative one. So like if we think about taking the limit as x approaches negative infinity of m of x, the numerator would be negative while the denominator is positive, therefore m of x will approach negative one. So there's a horizontal asymptote by definition at y equals to negative one. 
that describes like the left end behavior. And then the limit as x approaches infinity would be positive one because positive values in the numerator, positive in the denominator. So that means that um, as x approaches positive infinity, the y values will approach positive one. So we can kind of draw, let's draw our x and y axis and put in, in the graph what we know, which is not actually any points at this point, but this is important information. Okay, so we have horizontal asymptote at y equals to one as well as negative one, y equals to negative one. And then at negative two and two, there's vertical asymptotes because if we thought about plugging negative two or two, like evaluating M at negative two or two, we would get a number over zero. Um, which like if we think about from a limit perspective using direct substitution, we know that that means vertical asymptote at those values. Um, so like if we wanted to think about um, <clears throat> what M is approaching, as M approaches negative two from the left or two from the right, uh, we that would actually be helpful because we know it's, M will either be approaching positive or negative infinity. Um, so that'll kind of give us an idea of like where the graph of M is um, in relation to these end behavior asymptotes and then the vertical asymptotes. So if we thought about taking the limit as X approaches um, negative two from the left of M of X, uh, like thinking about test values, well, the numerator would be negative and the denominator would be positive. So it'll approach negative infinity. And then the limit as X approaches positive two from the right, uh, the numerator would be positive, denominator positive. So we'll approach positive infinity. So that's helpful. So as X approaches negative two from the left, the graph will approach negative infinity. And as X approaches two from the right, the graph will approach positive infinity. So let's go to figure out what's happening um, as we continue to the right. I guess we kind of have an idea. Like my, I'm thinking the graph is going to approach one as X approaches positive infinity and then negative one like that. So it'll, it's maybe not that exciting of a graph. However, we can use calculus to confirm that nothing like that we do have an accurate picture of our graph. So if we find F M prime using quotient rule, so that would be square root of X squared minus four times one minus, um, so low D high minus high D low. D low would be one half times x squared minus four to the negative one half times two x, all over low, low. And then simplifying the numerator, that would be minus x squared over the square root of x squared minus four, is a complex fraction over x squared minus four. And then we wanna get rid of that complex fraction. And we have to think about distributing in the numerator. So that would be x squared minus four minus x squared. Oh, those x squareds will cancel. So over x squared minus four to the three halves power. Okay, 
Um, nowhere that the numerator would be zero. So, and then denominator uh, two and negative two would make it zero. So, um, no critical numbers. No, that means no relative extrema, which makes sense with the graph that we have sketched so far. Um, let's also find F, M, well, actually, let's make an analysis line for M prime. And let's put those negative two and two on there. Nothing's in between, but we can think about test values to make sure that it makes sense with what we've found already. So negative three, positive three. So if we were to plug in negative three, we'd get a negative value, positive three, negative value. So decreasing, M is decreasing over its entire domain. So M is a monotonic function. So decreasing from negative infinity to negative two and two to infinity, increasing nowhere. Um, and then it, would be helpful to find M double prime to confirm uh, concavity. So decreasing everywhere makes sense with what we have sketched. So that's negative four times X squared minus four to the negative three halves. So we can just use chain rule to find M double prime. Uh, would be six X squared minus four to the negative five halves times two X. So 12x over x squared minus 4 to the 5 halves. Well, 0 can't be a possible point of inflection. We have the same restrictions in the denominator. So there's no possible points of inflection either. Um, but again, if we do an analysis line for m double prime, <clears throat> and we put negative 2 and 2 on it, Uh, negative three, we get negative value for M double prime. So concave down looks like a frown. And we'd get positive value, so concave up for two to infinity. So concave down from negative infinity to negative two, because at M double prime would be less than zero on that interval. And then concave up looks like a cup from two to infinity, where M double prime would be greater than zero. Okay, and it looks like my graph looks like it matches that. So we could double check on Desmos. So y equals 2x divided by square root of x squared minus 4. So even though, okay, yeah, our graph looks pretty accurate. Um, so even though we didn't really have anything too interesting happening in this graph, we were still able to confirm um, or look at the graph, sketching the graph kind of from a calculus perspective with like increasing, decreasing, the lack of relative extrema is telling, um, and then concavity and the fact that there were no possible points of inflection. Okay, so for figuring out what T of X looks like, um, <clears throat> there are no domain restrictions. I am adding the interval, we're just gonna graph um, t of x from 0 to 2 pi. Um, trying to find x-intercepts, that would be difficult. Let's just start by looking at where t would be increasing or decreasing if there's any relative extrema. So t prime would be negative 1 minus 2 times sine of x. So when we set equal to zero, t prime equal to zero, we would get sine of x is equal to negative one half. 
So on the interval from zero to two pi, that means that our critical numbers would be um, seven pi over six and 11 pi over six. And we can put those values on our analysis line for T prime. Okay, so this is for T prime. Um, and then for test values, gosh, we can use like pi, sine of pi is zero, so negative decreasing. <coughs> Between 7 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6, sine would be negative. Um, so that would make it pull. Or like, let's do 3 pi over 2 would be between. That makes it a little bit easier. So that would be negative 1 plus 2, um, which would be positive. So it's switch to increasing, and then between 11 pi over 6 and 2 pi, that would be sine, um, would be between negative 1 half and 0. So between negative 1 half and 0, we wouldn't be adding... So it would be negative one plus values that would end up being less than one. So um, it would be decreasing again. Okay, so we can say uh, T would be increasing between 7 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6 and decreasing from 0 to 7 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6 to 2 pi. Which means that there would be a relative minimum at seven pi over six, so where T prime changes from negative to positive, and we want the actual point so that we can plot it. Uh, so if we were to plug in seven pi over six into T, that would be negative seven pi over six and then cosine would be negative root three over two. So minus root three. To graph it would be helpful to know the approximation to that. So negative seven pi over six minus root three would be approximately negative 5.397. And then relative max at 11 pi over 6. And we want the ordered pair, so we want t of 11 pi over 6 would be negative 11 pi over 6 and then cosine of 11 pi over 6 would be positive root 3 over 2 so it would be plus root 3 and again having the approximation here would be helpful So I get negative 4.028. Okay, so 
let's, for me to determine what scale I want to use, let's go ahead and find T double prime, examine concavity, would be negative 2 cosine. So our possible points of inflection would be at pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. Doing an analysis line for T double prime. Okay. So cosine of anything in quadrant one is positive and then times negative two will be negative. So concave down. And then <clears throat> We could do like pi uh, would be negative two times negative one would be positive, so concave up. And then quadrant four cosine is positive times negative two would be negative. So it switches back to concave down. So concave down between zero and pi over two. 3 pi over 2 and 2 pi, and then concave up between pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. So that means points of inflection at pi over 2, so where t double prime changes sign, would be at pi over 2, so t of pi over 2 would be negative pi over 2. And then t of 3 pi over 2 would be negative 3 pi over 2. Okay, so for sketching this, I'm going to draw, I guess I'll go by pi over 6's. So pi over 6, uh, pi over 3, right? Because 1 pi over 6, 2 pi over 6, 3 pi over 6, 4 pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, 6 pi over 6, 7 pi over 6, 8 pi over 6, 8 pi over 6, 9 pi over 6, 10 pi over 6, 11 pi over 6, 2 pi. Okay. And then for graphing... So negative pi over 2 is approximately negative 1.571 and then negative 3 pi over 2 is approximately negative 4.712. Okay, so let's see. I think I'm just gonna go by ones. So negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five. 
negative 6. Okay, so then graphing points of inflection would be pi over 2, negative 1.571, and then 3 pi over 2, negative 4.712, so 1, 2, 3, 4, about down there. So those are changes in concavity and then the relative max and min. So it's seven pi over six. And then 11 pi over six would be negative Plugging in 2 pi and 0 could also be helpful. So uh, if we, t of 0 would be 2. And then concave down switches to concave up. and then still concave up. And then concave down. Probably should have used a grid. It'll go concave down, and that's a relative max. And then to 2 pi. And when 2 pi would be negative 2 pi. So negative 6.283. So it looks something like that. It's a very rough sketch. I think my spacing, so this is what the graph should look like. You can see we kind of have it. Um, you can tell that it's somewhat concave down on that first interval. So a rough sketch, but we did find, identify those details from using calculus.